Paul was doing uh, yesterday, the day after he died, uh, uh, was they thinking, and I'm sure Jesus probably didn't have a lot of clothes. Uh, I don't know what they had back then, but uh, when you start thinking, well, he's not coming back. Uh, as the disciples were gathered in the upper room, and they normally would gather in that room, and he would be with them, uh, uh, and he's not coming. Uh, they're there alone. Uh, I, I wonder how it felt uh, uh, for them to be there. They were hurting. Uh, uh, they were grieving, and it was hard on them. Amen? Uh, and they still as yet did not understand uh, what was about to happen. Amen? Uh, they still were having problems with it, amen. Uh, 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 but keep this in mind, uh, uh, and let's read from Luke chapter 24 uh, this morning. Luke chapter 24, I'm going to read uh, uh, the first 15 verses, uh, uh, and then we'll get on into the message. And the Bible said, uh, now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you, when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. And it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Then arose Peter, and ran unto the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed, wandering in himself at that which was come to pass. And behold, two of them went that way that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs, or six miles. And they talked together all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Uh, and I want to stop right there because, uh, and I've entitled this message Resurrection Day. Amen. Uh, uh, we like to call it Easter, and uh, uh, that's a world title. Amen. Uh, uh, but for us, it's a celebration of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, uh, it's Resurrection Day, amen, uh, uh, the day that we ought to really get excited, amen. Uh, uh, we get excited, and we spend a lot of time really uh, getting into Christmas, uh, but it seems like we don't spend as much time uh, uh, with Easter, amen. Uh, uh, we'll spend a month and a half getting everything ready to celebrate the birth, uh, uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, uh, his birth does not... Uh, 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 even come close to Resurrection Day. Amen. Uh, uh, now, I'm not belittling the birth by any means. I want you to understand something. Uh, uh, and I'm not belittling Good Friday because uh, uh, he died for me on Good Friday. Uh, but I praise God for Resurrection Day. Amen. Uh, yeah, because if he on. had not gotten up victorious over death, hell, and the grave, none of the rest of it would have mattered. Amen. Uh, Amen. Uh, if he had stayed dead and stayed in the ground, uh, uh, dying wouldn't have meant nothing. The birth wouldn't have meant nothing. Uh, but him getting up, amen, showing up, uh, he's got all power in heaven and earth, uh, and there's nothing can hold him down. Uh, uh, that is what we ought to celebrate. Uh, uh, that our God's alive and well and sitting on the throne today, amen. Uh, uh, listen, uh, we're not serving Mohammed, uh, who's still dead in the ground, amen. Uh, we're not serving Buddha, who's still dead and in the ground, uh, uh, Reverend Sung Young Moon and all the little moonies out there. Listen, uh, he's dead and in the ground. Uh, but I praise God. Uh, I can yeah, report to you today uh, that yeah. Jesus Christ uh, is alive and well. Uh, yeah. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. Uh, he's yeah. making intercession for you and I. Uh, right. And when he left this world, uh, he left with a promise uh, that I'm coming back and get you. Amen. Uh, all that I'm looking for that day. Yeah. Oh, I praise God for Resurrection Day. Amen. Yes, 
a moment. Uh, on that first uh, uh, Easter, uh, uh, listen, as uh, the sun began to rise that morning, uh, uh, the whole world was in trouble. Uh, uh, the Jews were under the heel of Rome. Uh, uh, five million people were slaves. Uh, uh, the rulers were more evil than ever. Uh, the infant mortality rate was high. Uh, plagues were sweeping unchecked through the population. Uh, well, listen to this. Taxation was a burden, amen? Uh, uh, listen, and people were worried. They were sad, confused, and disillusioned, amen? Uh, oh, listen, uh, as I got up this morning, uh, I want you to understand the world uh, is still in trouble, amen? Uh, oh, listen, uh, there's free people that are being oppressed by terrorists. Uh, there are leaders uh, that are out for themselves uh, more than the people. Uh, uh, there is immorality among our leaders like uh, we have never seen before. Uh, uh, diseases are growing and cures are lessening. Uh, abortion rates are climbing. Uh, oh, listen, uh, the infant mortality rate back then was very high. Uh, uh, but as we began to get a little more smarter, a little more intelligent about ourselves, uh, uh, we were able to come up with some cures for things uh, uh, and began to keep babies from dying. Amen. Uh, you can walk out here uh, and see back in the 20s and 30s uh, where babies didn't live long because of diseases. Uh, uh, but I want you to understand uh, uh, the mortality rate in babies is climbing again. Uh, and it's not because of disease. Uh, it's because of sin in the hearts uh, and abortion in the people. Oh Amen. Uh, yeah. And you need to understand. Uh, you want to know where I stand on this? Abortion is murder. Amen. Uh, yeah. It's wrong. Oh Amen. Uh, and it needs to oh. stop. Amen. Uh, oh, listen. Uh, taxation is a burden on the people today. Uh, uh, they're continually raising our taxes. Uh, absolutely every politician going to tell you, uh, I, if you'll get me in office, I'll do away with taxes. Uh, I'll lower your taxes, amen. Uh, uh, the first thing they do is raise them because they realize they can't get what they want done uh, if they don't have money uh, and they take hours, amen. Uh, oh, listen, uh, so what I tell you today, people are worried scared, sad, confused, and disillusioned. Uh, you can believe that uh, because a lot of it's us. Amen. Uh, oh, listen. Uh, I get sad when I see the condition of the world. Uh, oh, I get confused because I don't understand uh, why people do what they do. Amen. Uh, it bothers me. Amen. Uh, oh, listen. It worries me that I preach the gospel of uh, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, uh, and we don't see the people walk the aisles like we used to. Uh, oh, there were always years ago uh, somebody walking the aisle to be saved. Uh, somebody oh, yeah. wanting to get to Jesus. Uh, uh, but more and more today, uh, uh, people's hearts are hardened uh, and they don't want to yeah. get to the Lord. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, they're just turning their backs uh, on the only hope that they have. Uh, and that hope is Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, but what I want you to understand is uh, uh, that we see... Uh, that they celebrated Easter back then, uh, and the problems that were going on, uh, uh, we're celebrating Easter today, uh, and we've got a lot of the same problems. Uh, uh, Easter didn't change anything in the world, uh, and it's not going to, uh, uh, but I want you to know this uh, about Resurrection Day uh, today. Uh, it may not change the world, uh, but it can change you, amen. Uh, it can change our lives. Uh, and if it'll change me, uh, yeah. and it'll change you, and it'll change you. Uh, and we'll begin to work together. Uh, and uh -huh. we can make a difference uh, in the world, amen. Uh, yeah. uh, we may not get it changed the way we want to. Uh, 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 but when we leave this world, they'll know we've been here, amen. Uh, uh, I want the world to know uh, when they bury me out here. Uh, well, uh, we know he's been here, amen. Uh, uh, he left a mark, amen. Uh, uh, he left a thumbprint on us. Uh, he preached the gospel, amen. Uh, and he told the truth, amen. Uh, uh, listen, uh, we've got to be able to leave this world, uh, leaving our mark on it, amen. Uh, and our mark needs to be uh, that we are a child of God, uh, that we stand firm on the King James 16 11. Uh, that we believe wholeheartedly uh, in God himself, that God's the creator of the 
If you care about it, God cares about it. Right. Amen. Right. They went down there worried. Who's going to roll a stone away? They're worried. Matthew, and listen, and, and the, the point to the message was they came worried, but they left excited. Amen. Amen. We'll get worried, but if you get to Jesus, I promise you, Jesus will get you excited. Amen. Yeah. If you I'm get not. to the Lord, he'll excite you. Amen. Right. If there's nothing else in this world can excite you, Jesus ought to. Yeah. Amen. Uh, uh, Jesus told the disciples uh, when he sent the 70 out uh, and they came back, uh, uh, they said, listen, Lord, uh, uh, we heal sick folks. Uh, we even cast out devils. Uh, he said, uh -huh. those rejoice uh, because the demons are 
subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Amen. You ought to be excited today because you saved. I don't know the same people that just sat there. You ought to be up shouting because you ain't got to go to hell this morning. He got up from hell in your place. You ought to be just, just stomping the floor today. Come on. And they got down their words. Matthew 28 and 8. And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy. And did run to bring his disciples' word. Listen, that fear there ain't scared. They may, that's reverence. They were in the presence of the Lord down there. Yeah. Oh, listen, the Lord talked to Mary. Oh, listen, said, you need to go tell the boys that I have risen. Go down there and tell them I'm alive and well. Amen. Bible said they went back with great joy. They went down that word. Oh, who's going to roll up? I don't know what we. Let's just go. Maybe we sweet talk one of these soldiers and they'll roll the rock out of the way. I don't know. Listen, you got to get your makeup on. Look pretty. We'll get that soldier. We'll sweet talk him. He'll roll the rock out of the way. We'll do something. We'll get it out of the way. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't realize God had already rolled the rock away. Yeah. They didn't realize God had already showed up. God didn't get up early that morning. God don't sleep. If you think he's asleep, you need to read Psalms, amen. Said God never sleeps or slumbers. God's already up. He was just waiting on the right time, and he blowed that thing out of the way, and the Lord came out of me. Yeah. They got that word. When they met Jesus, they got excited. It said they left with great joy. Come on. Some of you came to church this morning, a little bit worried, a little bit down and out. Let me tell you something. You don't have to leave that way. Jesus right. is here. That's right. right up here. All around here. Yeah. Amen. Come on. All around right here. <laughs> If you get up here and get to him, you don't have to leave yeah. words. No, no. You don't have to leave yeah. down and out burdens. Bring your cares to him because he cares for you. Yeah. Get up here, amen. Don't you wait, hallelujah. Yes, come on. Brother Brent made a statement this morning. I didn't invest it. He kind of hit me over there. He said, this could be my last message. Come on. And you know, sometimes we don't think about that. Right. We could have sung our last song this morning. Come on. Preached our last message this morning. But guess what? You listening to me? We not might not make it to the altar call. Come on. If you feel like you need to pray, you better get up and move, amen. Come on. When you're preaching, it don't matter. You ain't gonna bother me, amen. If you're down here praying, it ain't gonna affect you the spirit, amen. I can preach through you. Listen, I've been preaching, uh, and folks get up right in the middle of preaching and start singing, amen. Yeah. It does not, all it does is feed me, amen. Yeah. And I'll preach a little harder. What are you saying? I'm saying be obedient, amen. Yeah. It could be today, could be our last Sunday together. Are you saying yeah. we're going to die? No, I'm saying we're going to get raptured, amen. Yeah. Oh, listen, oh. the trumpet may oh. sound this afternoon and we'll be heaven They came worried, but they left excited. Ex Jesus will excite you. I can remember this back, I don't know, that's 2002, 2003, way back, that's 20 years ago. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I, I shouldn't have said that. That makes me feel old. <laughs> but I remember getting off work and one of the supervisors was out there standing next to his pickup truck, and I walked out there, got done my time sheet and everything. I'm going out to get my car, and he says something, and I say something to him, and we get to talking about Jesus. And I'm standing there, and all these construction guys is coming in and out the office out there, and I'm standing there, and tears running down my face, and 
and I'm just a boo-hooing and talking about Jesus and, and all he's done for me and people getting saved and, and just right there in the parking lot. I don't care, amen. Uh, no. If the Spirit moves, I don't care where I'm at. I'm going to be it and enjoy it, amen. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, I almost got to preaching out there talking about Jesus. Jesus ought to excite you. Uh, if he's yeah. your Savior, uh, you're the bride. He is your bridegroom. Uh, you're going to marry him for eternity, amen. Uh, you ought to love him enough that being in his presence uh, excites you, amen. 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 It ought to excite you to know, whew, I'm going to get up on Sunday and get to go down to my bridegroom's house and see him, amen. Oh, listen, I can remember being engaged. And I, boy, I just loved them days when I could get off work, get down to her house to see her. Amen. I was excited. You wasn't excited about work? Work don't excite me. Okay? I learned when I was in high school that I had to work for 45 years and then I could retire. Amen? So no work don't excite me. Amen? Amen? <laughs> I, that was just a lifelong thing I was going to have to do. Amen? What excited me was, whew, I get to get off and go see her. Amen? Yes. Yay. And y'all done the same thing. Didn't you? Yeah. You did say. Well, James said he was old James said, yes. And he said, I remember marrying them twins and that figure just excited me. Well, tell the truth, brother. <laughs> get excited. <laughs> Question is, why can't we get that excited about going to church on Sunday? Get up and get excited. I get to go see Jesus. Yes. I get, well, Jesus is with me at home. I understand that, folks. He goes everywhere I go to. But there's something about being in his house and Come being on. in the spirit right. that ought to excite yes. you. Right. There's something about being in a place where the spirit moves that ought to excite you. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Come on. And I can, listen, I can sit at home. And get the gospel music on the TV or on the radio or something, and I can sit at home and feel the spirit and cry and all that. Yeah, but it's not on. the same as being here and fellowshipping. It's not the same as here the spirit bearing witness and going right. one. Yeah. There's something come about on. this, amen, that's different, amen. Huh? And I love everybody on Facebook that's listening. Huh? Yeah. And I'm telling you, you can't get the same thing sitting at home that you get sitting here uh, among the yeah. body of believers, yeah. amen, yeah. when the Spirit gets to stirring in the hearts of the people, yeah. amen. Yeah. Come on. And I'm going to say this. For all of those on the Facebook that are listening out there, Jesus loves you, and we do have a bunch of people in church. They just all sit out of camera view, so when y'all looking, because I watch these things, and it looks like ain't nobody in the church, because everybody sits out of camera view. And I said, man, the church looks empty. But church ain't empty, amen. They just out to the side, out to the just They won't get right in here, amen. But let me say this, it don't matter where you sit, God knows where you're at, and God knows That's you're right. here, amen. amen. And I'm glad you're here, amen. 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 Listen. I was 17 years old, and the church I went to had a pew next to the wall back there, and I was sitting. That was my seat every Sunday. Every, everybody knew that's where Lamar sit on that back pew, in that, right in the corner where I was sitting. And I was sitting right in that corner, right back there, 17 years old, when God snuck in, mm. snuck up on me and called me to preach. Amen? Mm -hmm. Got me, oh, amen. Man. I said, whoa, wait a minute. I don't know if I could do it, but I'm shy. I can't stand in front of people. I can't speak, Lord. I can't do that. He said, that's why I want you. I don't need somebody who can do it. He said, I want you to just stand and let me do it through you. Amen. Yeah. God don't need somebody that can. God needs somebody that wants to be filled. Amen. Yeah. That's what he wants. A house full of empty vessels that he can fill with his spirit. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Boy, if I hush, we ain't going to get done with this thing. Listen, uh, uh, they came worried, but they left with great joy and excited. Number two, uh, uh, they were disillusioned, uh, but they gained hope. Luke chapter 24, verse 10 and 11. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. Uh, and their words, listen, and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they 
believed them not. They went back. Uh, I could see them busting the door open in the upper room, uh, uh, shaking Peter and James and John and saying, get up, get up. We've been down to the grave. He's not there. He's yeah, risen. He's alive and well. The Bible said the apostles uh, there said their words seemed to them as idle tales. In other words, it seemed like it's a fairy tale. Yeah. Said, and they believed them not. They didn't believe what the ladies was telling them. Amen. Oh, listen, I want you to know something. Oh, when I was growing up, and the preacher would get up and preach, and he'd talk about somebody dying on a cross and getting up out of the grave. I didn't believe all that either, amen. I didn't believe those things until I met Jesus, amen. Yeah, and then right. I believed, amen. Oh, a lot of that stuff, that them stories they'd tell me that was in the Bible, I say, I don't know. Now, that seems kind of far fetched, don't it? That seems kind of wild and out there. But let me tell you something. Everything with God is yeah. wild and out there. Amen. Everything with God is supernatural. It ain't natural. A natural is what the yeah. world is made of. God is supernatural. Amen. Yes. Glory. And what's that say that preacher used that time? And I just love it to death. The devil is mighty, but God is almighty. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. That means the devil might be strong, but God's a lot stronger. Amen. 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 Guess who created who? Uh -huh. The devil did not create God. God created the devil. Amen. Come on. So the creator is always more powerful than the creation. Amen. Yes. They got there and they said, listen, Jesus is alive. Can't you see that? Y'all got to understand now. It's early in the morning. Disciples are grieving. Probably not sleeping all that way. They're tired. Say what? You ever been that way? <laughs> Five o'clock in the morning, somebody knock on your door and get you up. Listen, I've had people call me at four o'clock in the morning. Hello? Yeah. I'll take care of it. I got it. Yeah, yeah. Four hours later, somebody called me this morning. <laughs> I'm supposed to do something. Y'all ever been there? Huh? Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, y'all know you have. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Can't you see them ladies running there? Wake yeah. up. Jesus is alive. We saw him. Now what now? Now what? Jesus is alive. Wine bibbing again. We saw him put in the tomb and a rock put there and the soldiers guarding it. Pilate sealed it. <laughs> Can I say this right quick? Can I say this right Come on. When you seal something, you take your ring and your signet and it's sealed means it can't be opened except by you or somebody Go ahead now. With higher authority. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And Pilate didn't go open it. <laughs> Somebody with higher authority broke the seal and went in. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah, amen. Let him, Lord. That didn't cost you nothing. <laughs> what? He's up. Who's up? Jesus. Jesus of who? Jesus of Nazareth, the living son of God. Jesus, he got up. Yes, come on. Are y'all crazy? Come on now. Go in the kitchen, fix breakfast. We'll talk about this. <laughs> y'all got to see the conversation. The Bible says they didn't believe it. Come on. The apostles did not believe it. They thought it was a fairy tale. Two thousand years later, people are still trying to tell us it's a fairy tale. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you, there's no fairy tale That's to right. it, Amen. No, it happened. It's a fact. He's alive and well. How do you know? Because he lives within me, Amen. Yeah. He talks to me on a daily yeah. basis, Amen. I hear him talking, Amen. Yes, bless and dead Lord. people don't talk. Yeah. 
They were disillusioned, but I always know that but because I mean something changes it. But they gained some hope. John chapter 20, verse 19 and 20. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. They had to see it to believe it. I praise God. I believe. I have seen it. One of these days, I'll see him. Amen. One of these days, I won't have to see him face to face. Or if I faith anymore, I'll see him face to face. One of these days, I'll see him. Amen. But until then, I want you to know I am basing and counting my entire future on him and his resurrection and him coming back after me. Amen. Yes. Amen. Bless him, Lord. I got a thing. Listen. I got things from AT&T that talks about retirement because I'm retired from AT&T. I got some things from Cobb County where I had 401 money put in a 401k when I was the officer up there at Cobb County. I get my little things every year talking about that. And I look and said, you know, I need to roll that out of something else, put it in an IRA or a CD or, or put it somewhere else. Or put it, and I'm thinking about my future and, and all of that. Uh -huh. and, and I turned 62 last September, and I'm thinking about do I need to go ahead and, and call Social Security and go ahead and get me some money coming in. I only get about half of it right now until I get to be 65 or 67. But I, I'm looking at all this, all this thing down. But you know what? All of this is fleshly, it's temporary, it's just stuff down here, it's That's just right. going to get me by for a little while, amen? amen. But amen. what I want you to know is, uh, I've got a retirement plan, amen, from preaching, amen, uh, and yeah. it's laid up in glory. Uh, uh, now, if I live to be 95, uh, I'll still be a preacher, amen? Uh, I can't retire from preaching uh, till I get to glory, uh, and you know why I'll retire then? Uh, because everybody in heaven saved, and yeah. I don't need to preach, amen? I'll just be up there shouting up for the victory with everybody yeah. else, amen? Yeah. But till I get there, till I get my retirement in heaven, I'm going to preach down here, amen? Yeah. Come on. Now, I'm going to preach down here right now like I am now, loud and loose. Yeah, come on. 20 years, I'll be... <laughs> Amen. Bless them, Lord. Come on. Of 20 years, I'll be 82. <laughs> and I won't move quick. Amen. But I'm going to preach. Amen. 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 But until I wear it out, I'm going to wear it out. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yep. The benefits of being a Christian are out of this world. Amen. Said them disciples went down there, looked in the tomb, and I preached this last year, I think. God did not roll that stone away so Jesus could get out. Amen. They ain't a rock big enough to keep Jesus in. Come on. Amen. He rolled that stone away so we could look in and see he wasn't dead. He's alive Amen. and well. Yes. Because the Bible said Mary went in. The Bible said another place that Peter and John went in. Amen. And looked. Come and he wasn't there. It wasn't rolled away so he could get out his roll so we could look in and say, He ain't here. Amen. Yes. It is him that yeah. there. Come on. Sometimes we had they did them boys. Oh, they lying. They don't know what they had to go down there and see. Come on. And they looked in. John, Peter and John got down there. He, John, he ain't here. The Bible says John stooped down and looked in. John's like me. I ain't getting in the grave. <laughs> Peter went in. Yeah. Okay. I'll be like John. I'm just gonna look in there. Hey, I ain't. I've laid in the casket. Y'all ever laid in one? Uh-huh. They don't get with the lid open. But with the lid closed, I'm not 
sure I want to die because I'll suffocate with that lid closed. And I'm just telling you, it's tight, that thing comes down in your face, and it's dark. I'll be like I'll be like John. I'm gonna peek in. Peter went in and said, Woo, look, here's your garments. He's not here. Come on in. No, I'm not coming in there. But he looked in. I believe you. He ain't here. Amen. And they went back to the upper room and they told the rest of the boys, the ladies was right. He ain't here. And the Bible says that evening, they're gathered in the room and they're scared. Yes. Because the Jews have come together. And they delivered the Lord. And they've had him crucified. And they're scared. They're going to come for them now. And they're worried about it. And they got reason to be. If you read in John chapter 11, you'll read where Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And if you go yes. into chapter 12, you'll see where the high priest and the Pharisees were getting together trying to figure out how to kill Lazarus. Come because on. people were believing in Jesus because of Lazarus being raised. And they were trying to figure out how to kill him now. Now, I don't know what happened to poor old Lazarus. Amen. He, when, when the Lord left, he might have left with him. I don't know. But they tried. So the Jews, the, the, the apostles had a right to be worried. They wanted to put these guys to death. So they're hiding in the upper room. And the Bible said, didn't say Jesus opened the door. Doesn't say he come through the window. It says he appeared. He just appeared. Amen. He just showed up. Come on. Can you imagine? We just we just sitting around talking. Well, he wasn't there this morning. And I don't know if we need to go out and look for him. I don't know what we need to do. I don't know where he could be. And if we get out there, they may catch us. Maybe we can get out of here and get to another city once it gets dark. And about that time, he just appeared. Excuse me? Excuse me. <laughs> and he shows them his side and his hands. He said, it's me. It's me. That's right. Come on. <laughs> it's me. They were disillusioned, but they gained hope. Because Jesus showed up. Jesus will show up in your life and he will bring you hope. That's right. He will bring you hope. He's the only one. On. I'm going to tell you what, I've tried a lot of things in this world and ain't none of them beats Jesus. Come You're on. not going to try or have anything in this world that's going to bring hope to your life but Jesus. Jesus brings hope. Yeah. Number three. They left sad, but they returned on fire. Luke 24, 13 through 15. And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Two men. Yes, come on. Had been in Jerusalem. They lived in Emmaus. Emmaus is six miles away. So they headed home that evening. They said the Lord's been crucified. The lady said he got up. We don't know what's going on. We don't understand. We, it, it, and, and what I say? They left sad. They left Jerusalem sad. We, we just, we don't know. Too many questions unanswered. We don't know. They were sad. Come on. And Jesus appeared to them and said, what are you talking about? And they said, do you know what? not what's going on in Jerusalem? Now the Son of God was crucified and they buried him. And the ladies went to the tomb this morning and he wasn't there. They said he got up. Yes, Where have you been on. that you don't know all of this? Come on. And Jesus started. It's a good thing it's a six-mile walk. Bible said Jesus started at Moses and began to teach them everything from Moses all the way up to him about him. Everything in Scripture that had to do with him from Moses, Exodus, Moses, all the way. And y'all think I'm long-winded. <laughs> six miles walking is going to take you four, five, six hours It'll take you six hours if you can walk a, a mile in an hour. If 
you can keep up a good pace. But I imagine their pace slowed down listening to Jesus and him walking. And they finally get to Emmaus. And they said, it's dark. Why don't you come in, have supper with us? He said, no, I got somewhere else to go. He said, no, come on, eat supper. The Bible says Jesus went in to eat with them. It said he took the bread and he broke it and he blessed it and their eyes was open and they knew it was him. Yeah, and when they opened it, they said, listen, I did, I, y'all ain't got this picture. Come on. Jesus comes in and you don't know it's him, but he's sitting there at your dinner table. He says, bow your heads, we're going to pray. And he opens the bread up and he breaks it and he blesses it. And they realize it's him, and they open their eyes and look, and he's gone. Because the Bible said he vanished. Can you imagine you've got your eyes closed? Father, bless this food and bless these gentlemen and touch them. And their their eyes, the Bible said their heart, their eyes was open. They knew it was him. Can you imagine raising your head and looking? You know, Jesus is here, and he's gone. I had him here and didn't know it. He was here. And I, just, I didn't realize it. How many times have you been in the presence of the Lord and didn't realize it? Yeah, you never on. know. The Bible said we entertain angels unawares. Amen? Yeah. You never know when somebody yeah. knocks on your door. It might be an angel. You never know when that person you stop yeah. and talk to on the side of the road might be an angel. You I never know. know. Yeah. Amen? Right. When I was pastoring down at Little Vine, I got down there one morning. About 7 30, like I normally do. And I was sitting in my office in the back, and about 8 o'clock, I heard the front door open, which is very unusual. Sunday school is starting thin, and everybody showed up at 5 15. So the door opened, and I waited a minute, thought somebody might come in, come in the office, and my office was back over here. And I opened the door, and there's a little lady sitting there, and she's in her early 30s, I guess, and I come in, and I sit down, and I talk to her, and we talk for about 10 or 15 minutes, and she said, well, I'll just sit here for Sunday school, I said, well, I'm going to go back in my office, if you need anything, just let me know, and I went back in the office, and I come out, and Sunday school got ready to start, she was nowhere to be found, gone, never saw her again. Just an angel sent to check up on me, I guess. God will send an angel. That's right. Never, these guys walked with Jesus for six miles yeah. and didn't realize it was him. Come on. Sometimes I worry about us, how much we're walking with him and we don't realize it. If your heart's right, you'll know it's him. The Spirit will bear witness. That's if right. there's something not right, yes. you'll be in the presence of the Lord not even know. Yes. That's sad. But it said, they left sad. Let me jump on down. Luke 24, 30, 32. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. He took the bread. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it to them. And their eyes were open. And they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scripture? said, didn't our heart burn? If the Lord talks yes, to you, something on. in you will begin to burn and stir, amen. Right. Something in you will begin, yes. amen, uh, uh, to be ignited, amen. Uh, being with the Lord ought to start a fire yes. within his people, amen. It ought to excite us. That's why yes. I said talking about Jesus excites me, amen. Uh, it yes. stirs that fire. Yes, come on. We started a fire at the house the other night, burning a bunch of stuff. And that thing, I throwed a bunch of wet stuff on it, and it just fizzled on down. And I went in the house. About two hours later, it was starting to get dark. I looked out the back glass out there, and that thing was still burning. It done got bigger. The wind was blowing because it was blowing that rain in. It was, the wind was blowing hard, and that that. <laughs> come on. That breeze of blowing over it. Yeah. Yes. Stirred them embers up. Lit that thing back up. Come on. Fifty days. Fifty days after resurrection. 
They were gathered in an upper room. Yes. And there was a breeze, a rushing mighty wind. Right, come on. Blowed over the house. Hallelujah. Glory. Began to fill the people yeah. up. They began to speak in other tongues. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we need a little blowing of the spirit to reignite that fire within us. Amen. Yes, come on. The Bible said them boys went back to Jerusalem. It said, didn't the fire burn within us when he talked to us? Lord talks to me. I feel the fire. Amen. I get excited. Amen. I hope you feel the fire. Number four. This is the last point. The risen Christ still changes people. He didn't just change those disciples, those ladies, and those men to Emmaus back then. Resurrection changed them back then, but guess what? It's still changing people today. It, we got to let it change us. Yes, come on. It changed them, and it can change us. Second Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. <clears throat> when you get saved, you don't want to sin anymore. You don't want to do the old things. Huh? You, you may go out on Friday night and drink and get drunk, come to church on Sunday and get saved. And, and I mean really get saved now. Huh? Then that next week, you don't want to drink anymore. Huh? Uh -huh. You don't want to do the things you used yeah. to do. God changes your want-tos. Yeah. He changes your desires. Yeah. He makes you a new creature. If you come down here and you cry and you get up and want to go out and do the same thing you used to do, you didn't get it. Come on. When God changes you, you don't want to do the same stuff. Yes, bless him, Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Be not conformed to this world. That means don't try to fit in with everything. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Stop trying to fit in with society. Come on. Stop trying to fit in with culture. Stop trying. Yeah. Well, preacher, we, we, we supposed to like the black people and like the brown people. And like we supposed to do, we got to. That ain't got nothing to do with fitting in with culture, amen. That's Bible yeah. doctrine, oh, amen. Lord. We're all God's children. We're supposed to love everybody, yeah. regardless of race, color, creed, nationality, or anything yeah. else. We're to yeah. love everybody except yeah. everybody. You need to realize huh, you ain't perfect either. Huh? Perfect. So stop judging everybody else, yeah. amen. Uh -huh. Stop looking down on others, amen. Yeah. Uh, and realize huh, you're a sinner headed to hell. God saved you, and that's the only difference yeah. between you and uh -huh. them, amen. You're saved, uh, and the same God saved you can save them, amen. That's right. Amen. So me loving everybody ain't fitting in with culture, it's fitting in with God. And I'd rather fit in with what God teaches than culture or political or anything else. I'm going to say this, and some of y'all ain't going to understand it. I don't want to be religious. I want to have salvation and be saved. Religion will take you to hell. A lot of people put their stock in their religion. Religion ain't what it's about. It's about salvation and your relationship with God. That's right. It ain't about religion or denominations. That's, that's all man-made stuff. Yes, it is. I need the good old God-made stuff. Amen. Come on. Amen. Oh, yes. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened. And the word quickened means change. And you hath he quickened who were dead in your trespasses and sins. You were dead in your trespasses and sins, and he changed you. See, I'm talking about resurrection changing us. God has changed us. He changed them ladies. He changed the apostles. 
He changed the guys on Emmaus. He can change us. And if you've been saved, you've been changed. Amen. And it's time for the change to show. Yes, come on. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 6. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in our sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Come on. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love and mercy, loved us when we were sinners. Loved us when we had all that wrong and all that nasty on us. Come on. He still loved us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on. And then it said, "Hath quickened us." He loved us when we were sinners, but he changed us so we're not sinners. Wow. He quickened us together with Christ. He changed us using Jesus. God changed us using His Son through His Son. Through the shed blood on Calvary, through the resurrection. Yes. That's how he changed us. He Come died on. for our sins, but he rose for our justification. Yes. It took both the death, burial, and resurrection to change us. Come on. Amen. So I'm not changed simply because he died this past Friday. I'm changed because he got up to change me. Yes. And then he went on and said, he raised us up and made us sit together in heavenly places. That come means on. we can come together on Sunday and worship in heavenly yes. places. We can feel the spirit. Yes. We can feel come the on. joy. We can feel the peace. We can yes. feel the grace. We can come over here and feel everything that God's got for us. Yes, come on. Preacher, you sure are preaching long this morning? Yeah, because I ain't preaching tonight. We don't have church on Sunday nights on Easter. So I got to squeeze it all in. So just get comfortable. <laughs> Amen. No, that's it. He's made us sit together in heavenly places today. I feel like I've been sitting in heavenly places today. I feel like God has moved today. I feel like God loves us today. Yes, come on. I feel like we need to love him yeah. more. We need to show the change more. People need to see the change in us. They need to know that there's a difference in us. When people look at us, we need to stop looking like the world. That's right. I'm going to be ugly for a minute. I really am. <laughs> I'm going to be ugly. And, 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 and I've never been known to be politically correct, okay? I just ain't. That's just the way it is. There's a commercial comes on on the TV, and this kid's sitting in this room worried about the way they look, and they put these clothes on, and they go bouncing into school all happy. And I've seen that commercial 50 times, I know, and I still ain't figured out if it's a boy or a girl. I, 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 and see, the Bible's totally against that. The Bible says that women are not to wear men's clothes. Men are not to wear women's clothes. You're supposed to be able to tell the difference. Oh, y'all ain't like a dumb as this, are you? Oh, well, get your heart right. But I'm telling you right now, there's supposed to be a difference. The Bible says come out from among the world and be separate, amen. Yeah. We got to stop trying to fit in and be politically correct, amen. We need to be biblically correct. Right. Be what God has called us to be. That's come right. On. Come on. When you look at somebody and you can't tell if it's a boy or a girl, something ain't right. I think y'all look and tell I'm a guy. Amen. There ain't many women running around with beards. There's a few. <laughs> but there ain't many. Okay? Uh, yours is coming. They say if you stay married to somebody long enough, you start to look like them. So look in the mirror. <laughs> he got a plug <laughs> in the image of God and we need to start looking like him. People need to look at us and know we're a Christian. That's right. And they don't. That's the reason they just flock 
get away from churches today because they don't see no difference in what's going on in here and what's going on out there. That's they right. need to know there's a difference. There's been a change, amen. Yes. And starting today, Resurrection Day, we've read about God changing. Let God make a change in us. And when you leave here, let that change be known yes. and seen in the world. Come on. Show the change today. Yes. Be different. That's right. Be the Christian you're supposed to be. Come Stop on. looking like everybody else. Come Stop on. acting like everybody else. Yes, amen. Stop walking like everybody else. Amen. Walk with your head held high. Walk like a Christian. Be what God's called you to be and expects you to be. Amen. Yes. You're a child of God. Act like it. Amen. Come on. The preacher, he was doing good with the message. Ain't the message. Wake up. <laughs> That's what Let pastors get to do. That's, that's part of being a pastor. I can tell. Folks, there's got to be a change. The sad thing is, and I'm going to ask you this, when God looks at you, does God see a change? That's right. God's on. trying to make a change in you. Put yourself in God's place <laughs> yes. and see how God looks at you. <laughs> That's right. When I look and I think, well, let me, let me just see, how does God see me? I get disappointed sometimes. <laughs> Amen? Come on. I wonder sometimes if I'm doing things that make him proud of me, so he say, that's my son. That's my son. Come on. You know, I like to do things so he'll brag on me and say, that's my son. Most days he don't. <laughs> <laughs> Most days they say, is that your son? Uh, well, <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't just step up. That's my boy. That's my boy. There's got to be a change, folks. Does God see a change in you? Does the world see a change in you? Let today be the day that God makes a change in you. Well, I'm saved. Well, he can still make a better change in you. He can make you better than what you were. You come in one way, you can leave better. Believe it or not, God can yes, make you better on. than the way you come in. Yes. Brother Brent read a verse this morning, and I quote that verse. I don't know how many times I've quoted that verse to you. To diligently make your calling and election sure. To know that you know that you know that you're saved. He said, make your calling and your election. You elect what you chose. I chose to be saved. I chose to call. He said, make your calling and election sure. Know it. Know it. A lot of people are sitting in churches today, I think I'm saved, and I hope I'm saved, and they're going to walk off into hell. Come you on. got to know that you, I know there's been a change in me. I know God changed me. And I know I can be better than what I am. That's right. Come on. And I pray every day, God, make me better. Yes. Make me a better preacher. Make me a better pastor. And more than anything, make me a better Christian. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah, y'all sitting there doing this, but I know what you're thinking. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, you better get all that out of your mind. Better get your heart centered on the Lord because he's coming back. While we stand this morning, this altar is open. You need to talk to the Lord this morning. You need to make a change. God's able to make that change. The Bible said he has quickened us. He has changed us. He wants to make a change in us. He wants to make us better. That's the reason in Jeremiah chapter 18, he never took the clay off the wheel. That's right. He just kept remaking it, remaking it, making it better, working the, the, the mar and, and the bad stuff out, making it so that it'll be just what he wants it to be. God wants to keep working in you, making you better. Yes. But he can't make you better if you don't say, Lord, I want to be better. That's right. The one thing that keeps God from working in your life is you. You're the
the only thing that will hinder the power of God from working in your life. Yeah. Because you're the one thing that can say, no, I don't want it. I, I, I'll do it on my own. I, I've got this, Lord. You take a break. You're the one thing that hinders God from working. Right. You need to come down here and get you out of the way. Come on. You know, if I keep saying, come down, pray for your kids, pray for your job, pray for Sometimes you need to come down here and get you out of the way. Amen. Amen. We need to get us out of the way so we do what we're supposed to do. Because you can't pray to help somebody else if you ain't got your own stuff clean. Jesus said, don't try to get no beam out of somebody's eye when you got a mold in yours. Worry about your own mess. Come on. Clean yourself up. Get yourself right. Then you can fix somebody else. That's right. Amen. 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 That's enough from me, amen? This altar is open. You need to talk to the Lord. Would you please come do your business in this morning while we sing? Page 165. Seated. I'll run through the announcements. We'll get the money, and then Brother Jimmy's got one other video he's going to show, and we'll close out. Amen. Right. Um, let's see. Huh? What? Do you mind if I sing a song? I do not. Come on around. Come on around. Yes. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak. Yeah. 
change for the flower fund, put it in the hands up front. Today is also pledge day, uh, so please fill out your envelope, drop your money in the plate when it goes by. Uh, we are not having an evening service tonight because uh, I don't get to hear all day. Uh, so uh, uh, whatever you do today with your family, your friends, I hope you have a good time. Be safe, but always keep in mind this is about Jesus today. Amen. It's all about Jesus. Uh, Wednesday night at 6 o'clock, uh, we got a deacon's meeting. 7 o'clock, we got conference. Everybody needs to try to be here, please. Uh, the 19th, which is a week from this coming Wednesday, uh, we start our revival. Brother John Turner will be pre preaching revival. Uh, 7 o'clock each night. So please be here, and uh, we're going to have a good time in the Lord. Two weeks from today is homecoming, and on that day, we will not have Sunday school, so the ladies can stay home and have a little extra time cooking and getting things ready, uh, but two weeks from today is homecoming. The New Life Singers are going to be here, uh, and uh, I've already talked with Brother Don. He said, yep, we on the calendar. They're going to be here, so uh, they will be here that Sunday, and uh, we're looking for a good time in all three weeks from today is the 30th, and that's Youth Sunday, and the youth will be doing their little stuff that day, and Brother Justin Simmons uh, will be preaching for us that day, so uh, looking for a good time in the Lord that day, amen, uh, so, and then of course there's the other little stuff that we're doing during the week and all that, keep all that in mind, uh, and again, I want to say thank you to the ladies uh, for breakfast this morning, amen, it was excellent, it uh, I was sitting there eating, and I and I thought this is better than Waffle House. So <laughs> if you can beat the Waffle House, you're doing good, amen. Uh, so because I love Waffle House, amen. Y'all done an excellent job this morning. I love you. I appreciate it. I appreciate those that came over and and cleaned up a little bit this week. Uh, I appreciate those that came over for the egg hunt and the cookout yesterday. Brother Jimmy got soaked out there trying to cook. And, he got the cooking done. It was good. Don't punch your finger this way. Uh, it was, we had a good time. And the egg kid could, kids couldn't hunt the eggs outside, but we had 700 eggs throwed all in the fellowship hall. And they hunted them. And they found them. Amen. And some even found the eggs with money in it. Amen. So we had a good time yesterday. I appreciate everybody getting all that together. Thank you very much. Y'all done a good job with everything this week. Uh, and again, as Brother Brent made mention, it, we need to step up, be steadfast. We've got a lot going on, a lot of things, we need a lot of help, so please be here. Don't forget all those announcements. You got me plugged up, ready, Brother Jimmy? I'm uh -huh. screen down. He's going to play this. This will be your dismissal. So when this video's over, uh, well, no, wait a minute. i got to get the money. Yeah, hold that money up. Uh, brother, well, <laughs> take that plate and go stand in the back. Y'all put your money in the plate as you're going out. How about that? We'll do it that way. But wait till the video's over, and as you start out, put your money in the plate. Amen.